My name is Jerry Tashwa. Inevitably, during my masterclass presentations, I will get the question on mallets. What is my concept on mallets? Which kind of mallets do I use and recommend? Let me give you a brief history on, I guess, my evolution of mallets. Somewhere around the early to mid 70s, uh, while I was attending Berklee College of Music in Boston, the mallet of choice was made by a fellow by the name of Bill Marimba. That's right, his name was Bill Marimba. Lived in Dover, Maryland, and he made a line of mallets called Good Vibes Mallets. These were quality mallets, great rattan, nice windings, very consistent. Uh, it was a mallet that everybody wanted, and everybody that can afford would get these mallets. Uh, and this was just a highly sought after mallet. Somewhere around 1974, 75, I got a call from Bill Marimba basically saying that he was going to retire from the mallet business and he was placing one last order and if I wanted to order uh, some mallets. Of course, there were no other mallets at this time that I thought were worthy of playing, so I said, sure, I, I need to order two sets of mallets. Uh, it was about $100 at that time for a poor, starving college kid. That was a lot of money, but uh, you know, this is something I had to have. I remember the UPS man came, brought my mallets. I set them on my kitchen table. I was so excited. I had to get to class, so I went to class on my way back. I, I came into my apartment, opened up my door, and my little uh, Labrador puppy met me at the door, all covered in blue yarn. Uh, and she had gotten into the mallets and destroyed all eight of them. I called Bill Marimba, I told him what happened. He was gracious enough to, to say, yeah, he'll replace the mallets for me if I can cover the shipping costs, which of course I did. Um, so anyway, the mallets came and I loved them. Great, wonderful mallets, but also I realized, you know, mallets wear up. So I would do things to try to preserve these good vibes mallets and make them last as long as possible. I had a set of practice mallets that I would use them exclusively for, for practicing and I would use the new mallets for performances. Now, I was doing a lot of playing at that time, so obviously mallets wear out. Uh, a couple things that I started doing, I found out where they crossed, where the rattan would actually cross, they started to wear there. So what I would do is I would take some plastic uh, electrical tape and I would wrap it around right there on the mallet where the two mallets cross, and this way the electrical tape would wear out and I could easily just replace the electrical tape and try to preserve my mallets a little bit longer. As they started to fray, I was like starting to panic and I realized, what can I do? So I eventually learned to wrap my own mallets. I found a, a store in Boston that sold a nylon yarn, which was really good, and I would learn to wrap my mallets and I would count the number of wraps and I got real good at actually sewing the mallets and they looked real nice and they sounded like you know the good vibes mallets that I was used to. So that became the thing that I had to do. Now eventually, obviously, the mallets were wearing out. Panic set in. I mean, there really weren't any companies making great mallets at the time. There was another company that came along uh, by the name of Deschler. They made rattan mallets and they weren't very consistent. Uh, you had to go through a lot of them to find uh, mallets that you know, were equal in balance and weight and the heads looked about the same and the rattan was kind of funky. Uh, so anyway, but that was an acceptable solution, I guess, for the shortage of mallets. About that time then, a lot of companies started making mallets. As a matter of fact, uh, Ludwig Musser purchased the rights to make the Good Vibes mallets. And since I was one of their endorsing artists, and I had been for a long time, they approached me uh, about having a signature line of mallets, Jerry Tashwell line of mallets for Good Vibes. I was very excited about that, and I said, absolutely, I wanted that. Uh, so I used those mallets for quite a while, and I was very pleased with the sound that I got on them. They, they, were, they were fairly consistent. Uh, as an artist, I was able to actually go to the factory and select the mallets and go through bins and find mallets that I really liked that were straight, consistent, sounded good. Uh, if I couldn't actually get to the factory, Ludwig would send me boxes of mallets, and I would go through them and find you know four of them that were the same kind of flex, the same kind of thickness, the same kind of hardness. And, and so as, a, as an endorsing artist, this was an advantage and something I really didn't 
consider too much except that I was very lucky to have consistent mallets. Um, as I said, there was a lot of people that had started making mallets. There was a group of individuals, actually one in particular by the name of Eric Johnson. He was uh, the guy who founded Innovative Percussion. And he approached me one time. They, they were out of the uh, Middle Tennessee State University. And some of them were actually you know, students of mine. But he approached me and said, hey, Jerry, we'd, we'd like you to be one of our endorsing artists. Would you consider you know, coming aboard? I had just acquired, again, the Good Vibes signature line. So I graciously declined at that point. I said, you know, let's, let's keep it in the mind, but right in the mind for the future. But right now, I'm pretty set with, with what I have. So I, I feel good about it. And, and we'll just let it go. Well, a couple years went by, and, and I started getting calls, you know, from people all over the world. Say, hey, Jerry, I bought your mallets, you know, and you know, they're falling apart, or I don't like the sound of them, or the rattan is one's whippy and one's real stiff. What can I? I don't actually make the mallets. Call Ludwig Musser. They make the mallets and, and deal with them. A few years later, again, I ran into Eric Johnson uh, at uh, a Percussive Arts Society convention, I believe. And one, one more time, he approached me and said, Hey, Jerry, would you consider now maybe, you know, let's develop a Jerry Tashwa prototype mallet and see where it takes us? And he said, You're, you know, so close to us. I lived in Nashville, and they're a little bit south of Nashville, a couple miles. And he said, You can come to the factory, pick your rattan uh, at any given time. You know, we'll get you some mallets, whatever you need. So it, it seemed like an offer that I couldn't refuse. I said, All right, let, let's give it a go. They sent me... Uh, a box of mallets to start off with and each of them were color coded and numbered and so I went through the mallets and I, I selected the ones that I, I kind of liked and kind of you know, felt good and I sent them back to them saying okay this mallet number one is a little too soft this mallet number two it's a little too uh, too heavy this one's a little too soft and heavy and, and I went through all these mallets and kind of you know made little determinations on what I was looking for so about another week went by and then I would get another shipment from Innovative Percussion of mallets and I would go through them again and, and, and this went on and on for, for about a year and, I, and I'm real picky with mallets. I, I want mallets that are real straight and I want mallets that are, are fairly stiff and I'm looking for a real good tone. So anyway, this went on for a while till it got to the point where it was like, <coughs> excuse me, I like this mallet put four more wraps on it but make them four more wraps a little bit soft or not real tight and uh, they did and they showed up one day again after about a year I, I opened the box and I went downstairs and I played these mallets and I said wow that's it this is these are perfect so I called them up and they have a computer and I think they were one of the first companies to have a computer but they would you know I told them which which one it was they would load it into the computer and load the, the machine and they would say, okay, Jerry Tashwa JT23 mallets, and it would wind the mallets consistently every time with the same amount of wraps, with the same amount of tension, and they were consistent and they sounded great. Innovative gets wonderful, wonderful rattan, very straight, very nice rattan. The way they attach the heads to the, to the handles is a two process in that I think they, they thread it on and they also glue it on, so these are never going to come off. I have never had an innovative percussion mallet where the head went flying off. Uh, many times with the Good Vibes mallets, I'd be playing along, all of a sudden it would you know, fly off and hit somebody. Never with the innovative percussion. Uh, what I look for, I look for a consistency in rattan. I don't have very big hands, so I don't want a real thick rattan handle. I want something on the thinner side but with the thinner side, I want a rigid mallet. I don't want a lot of flex. I don't like a whippy mallet. I like it to be fairly rigid. And unfortunately, the thinner you go, obviously that, that's going to be a little bit whippier. So it's, it's a hard kind of a compromise to find the right thickness for me and the right degree of rigidity. Uh, so anyway, I, I'm fortunate that I can go to the company and they have a great selection and I'm picking the rattan. Uh, and I showed them what I like, and they're real good about selecting them and knowing uh, that I like, again, a thinner mallet with a rigid mallet and straight, and these are the innovative percussion mallets. And also, the tone that I get out of these mallets, I get a real nice fundamental of tone without the, the incredible attack that you get out of a lot of mallets. Um, you'll see a lot of mallet percussionists, and, and I was one of those too, 
uh, when I was involved with the, with the orchestras in, in Pittsburgh, um, you have a lot of mallets. You have, like, when you have to play a xylophone part, you'll have hard plastic mallets, and if the conductor says it's a little too brittle, then you reach and you get your maybe a wooden mallet, which won't you know sound quite as attacky as the hard plastic mallet, or maybe a hard rubber mallet. So I had this huge arsenal of mallets also, and it's just hard to keep track of. It's hard to keep track of what does this mallet do? What does this mallet sound like? When is the time to replace the mallets? They're wearing out. Which mallets do I get? You know, and it was just, just, just a battle dealing with all these mallets that I had to kind of keep control of. And, uh, and again, that's part of being in, a, in the orchestra, I guess, where you have to have different kind of sounds for different, different tunes. Fortunately, at this point in my career, I'm predominantly a, uh, an original uh, jazz mallet artist on vibraphone and marimba. I play both instruments and occasionally I'll use the synth mallet synthesizer, but I'm looking for a mallet that gives me a consistency in sound, that gives me a good fundamental, that doesn't have a really bright attacky sound, and these JT, Jerry Tashua, JT23 mallets from Innovative are exactly what I designed them for. When I play the vibraphone, I don't have time to say, okay, I'm playing down at the low end, I need soft mallet, and reach over here and grab the soft mallets. And then I come up here and go, oh no, I need a harder mallet because I'm at the high end and go back and forth. And the same on marimba. When I play, I play the whole instrument. I constantly play the whole instrument. I could be, one hand could be down here, one hand could be up here, and I'm not gonna be able to switch mallets. So I'm finding a mallet that works in all situations for me. These mallets that I design are what I call a, they're a medium mallet, of course, maybe a medium on the soft side. They're not real tacky, and I don't like the tacky sound. I, I always used to refer to the old Lionel Hampton records, and again, their recording technology at that time wasn't very good. And uh, so, to me, it always sounded like it was just too brittle that he was playing with almost like a glass mallet. They were just harsh, harsh to listen to the vibraphone. I never like that sound. I like a tone. I like to hear a fundamental with warmth without the attack. These JT23 mallets do that. They give me a really nice fundamental. They're, they're dampening in such a way that they work. Uh, I can come up to the high end. I can go over back behind me on a marimba and I can play the extremes of the marimba and I get the sound that I intend to get and that I'm looking for. And it works on all my recordings. I'm real happy with it. The other question always comes up about, well, Rattan versus dowel rods. Yes, dowel rods are straight. Consistently straight, always straight. However, when you play the vibraphone, you have to dampen. And when you're dampening, you're actually putting a lot of pressure on the mallet, and you see the flex of the mallet to actually go across the bars to dampen the bar so that it doesn't ring. Rattan gives you that ability to really put some flex and fl some pressure on the bars. You don't get that with dial. If you tried that with dial, you would probably break the dowels. Uh, so anyway, rattan is the only way to do it. I like the feel of rattan, but again, rattan is a natural product. Uh, it grows, and because of that, there are going to be difference in thickness, there's going to be difference in feel, there's going to be difference in the whippiness of the mallet. Uh, so you have to try to find a consistency. And again, as a natural product, it's hard. That's one of the challenges of playing with tan mallets. And then in humidity, when it gets real humid in the summer, sometimes they start to bend a little bit on you. They get a little bit not straight. Again, that's the disadvantages of rattan. Dowel doesn't do that. Dowel are straight all the time. They're milled. Uh, they're just understood that that's the way they're going to be all the time. So you're real lucky when you play dowel versus rattan doesn't seem to be an option for me. I like the rattan mallets. I like the feel of them. I use the rattan. I use the whip of the mallet a lot of times. If I really want to pop a note, I can use the, you can see the mallet actually just whipping and use that kind of uh, point of just attack and really popping a note and without getting a real brittle attacky sound. Because again, these mallets allow a fundamental to come out that, uh, that you're not going to get if you use a harder mallet. You're going to get more of an attacky sound. So I highly recommend these mallets, and people that have been using them have notified me that this is, has become their favorite mallet in terms of just a broad spectrum of overall quality sound. 
You can play solo pieces on the vibraphone where it's just you and it just sounds warm and thick and lush. I get with the band and again, I can play with the band. Uh, if there ever gets a situation where I need to be louder, it wouldn't be my natural tendency to grab a louder mallet anyway because I don't like that attacky sound. If I need to be louder, the other option is let's get a better amplification system. Let's get some better mics or some pickups or something that's going to allow me to play with my consistent uh, technique and my consistent mallet of choice with my good fundamental of tone and my ability to dampen properly and let's amplify the instrument so that it can be heard and not have to adjust with the different kind of mallets. So that's my theory on mallets and that's kind of the history of how I got to where I am and what's going on with the mallets. Uh, we're very fortunate nowadays that there are a lot of companies that are making good mallets. I'm very fortunate that the innovative company which is local for me I think makes the highest quality uh, mallet on the market that I highly recommend and again they're consistent, heads don't come flying off and great people to deal with and I encourage you to check out the JT23 Jerry Tashwa signature line and I hope you like them and God bless you. Thank you.